る心の中へ広く深く物語のような牛の雫その中に遅い線路を築く時間とともに時代は動く流れる星は静かに動くわ目を閉じて耳を澄ませば GOOD BYE 放て光負けずにしっかり今時を越え誰かに届くまで栄光の光はこの向こうに君たちの作っていくストーリー Hey everybody, this is Arrow again with、uh, episode 2, part 2 of Manga Collab, working with Anime Doodler on this.、Um, as you can see, the picture is actually already done. That's because when, we did the f- when I tried to record this the first time while I was making the picture,、uh, it ended up being pretty terrible quality, like 320 by whatever, like just horrible. So, I decided I'd just finish the picture and then explain a bit about it with you guys this time instead of making you watch five hours worth of video compressed into、uh, ten minutes, which would have been really, really fast. So,、um, I'll bring up the sketch real quick so you can see. So, here's the original sketch I got to work with. And、uh, I think the emphasis of this episode was、uh, folds and stuff, like right here, right here,、um, up on his shoulder,、uh, in the. Collar kind of type thing, and his belt and、uh, bandages on his arm. So, those were the big points of this episode, I guess. And、uh, let's drop that back again. And、uh, so, as you can see, when I do shadows or when I try and show a fold or something, I use shadows to show that fold since I don't have outlines when I do this stuff. So, Like right here, you can see the folds on the shoulder. I just kind of used little bits of what look like shadow to make the folds look like they're there. So, instead of, like, you can use darker colors and stuff for either shading or for, or to show folds or to do a lot of stuff, really. It just depends on how you want to place it and stuff. So, right here on, along his arm, the same color is used, but it acts as shadow just because that's where you would expect shadow to be. But putting it up on his shoulder, it kind of shows the folds and that. Cloth, so you can use shadows and stuff in a lot of different ways depending on their shapes and where they're placed and stuff. Same thing with his armband here, they're placed horizontally. You would expect that to be folds in the cloth or layers in the cloth, so that's what you see when you put shadow lines there.、Um, with the pants and stuff, you can show shadow same way. And、uh, especially with the belt here, I thought that came out kind of well, so it, I don't know, it looks cool. Um, let's see here. Another thing that I wanted to go over was、um, how to make these shadows and how to get them to line up with the cloth that you're making and stuff. So let's go up here to the hair, to his ponytail type thing. You can see, because of the way I have the shadow set up, you can kind of tell like this is the back of his head and that's pulled back into a ponytail back here that's at a farther distance away. So, to kind of give you an idea how this stuff works, we can actually delete this and then、uh, redo it. So, you're going to want to start with a pen tool, go back, make sure you have that dark color selected. Yeah. So, go back,、um, pass that bit like into his head, really, so that when you put it back, it'll go behind his head. So, go back behind there, and then you can kind of come in to, and then just like create a curve. And it doesn't matter if you go outside because that's going to get cut away. So we'll go over to this bit here. And then actually we need to go further back. So let's go over here and go like that. And then from there we'll just cover up the other two and go all the way back and then connect up the shape. And then, what you're going to want to do is you're going to select the hair that you're trying to put shadow onto, and then Control C, Control F. So that'll put a copy directly on top of what you actually have. And then you select the shadow shape and go over to Pathfinder. If you don't have Pathfinder on the side, you can go up into Window and then just click on Pathfinder here. It'll bring it up and you can drag it over into your bar over here. So, Pathfinder, and then you're going to want to select、um, Intersect. And doing that will give you. Whatever's on top of the shape that's on the bottom, really. So you'll end up with a shape that fits directly onto that hair. And then I'm going to go right click, arrange, send to back because the hair is pretty far back there. And then just control and then right square bracket until it comes up to the layer that we want it to be on.、Uh, this might take a bit. There we go. 
make sure it's on the right page. There we go. Alright, so that kind of covers it up. It gives you that shadow that you're looking for, and by having the lines of the shadow not really connect on this, it shows the difference between the head and the ponytail in the background. So just a few little things to think about while you're doing that. Um, some other things that you can do with shadow, like I did like in a similar fashion that I did on the folds of the shirt, you can show uh, muscles, you can show, like here I showed the collarbone and the neck. Um, you can even go up and do mouth or nose or all kinds of stuff like that. Just little lines and stuff similar to the way that you would just draw it with a picture but using color to show that area. And you get a similar effect and it looks pretty clean. Uh, let's see here, what else can we go over? Um, I actually went through that a lot faster than I was expecting, so let's give you something else. Let's go over to highlights. Uh, I put a highlight on the sheath of this sword using kind of a similar shape. Um, pretty much I just made that curve and then cut it off right there. And then did the same thing that I did with the hair so it would line up perfect, uh, perfectly to the shape I originally had there. Um, but what I did with this was I used a gradient. So let's go over to the gradient real quick. Um, it's not showing me what kind of gradient I have on that. That's interesting. Uh, but you know what? I'll just redo it just for, so you can get an idea. Uh, it's going to be a linear gradient, and you're going to want to drag this middle one over and put another one way over here. The outside one, you're going to want them all to be white, actually. Uh, let's get rid of that extra one there. But the important difference is the opacity to the ones on the left. So you're going to want to set both the left and the right opacity to zero. And then you end up... Hmm, that's interesting. Oh, that's why. There we go. Alright, so you end up with a kind of a line going through the middle. This you can change the angle a little bit so it matches up. I put horizontal to the angle that the sheath was going. Scabbard, sheath, whatever. And then the last bit is to set the opacity down. So if you had it up at 100, it'd look kind of like that. You set it down to about 27-ish. And it just kind of looks like a shine on there. So it gives you a nice effect. Um, I would talk a bit about how I did this background. It's actually a real picture that I just used the uh, Live Trace tool. Um, I'm probably going to end up showing you how to do that later on. Um, let's get rid of a few layers here so you can get an idea. See, that's what it looks like without a background. You add in the Live Trace background and you end up with feet that I didn't really like the shading of so I just covered them up. Um, there's a shadow just to give a bit of reality onto the background, I guess. And then some leaves in front of his legs, so it looks like he's standing in it. So uh, it came out pretty well. I guess it's clean. Um, oh yeah, one last thing that I forgot to show you. Like I talked about how you can use shading and stuff on the face and muscle structure and bones and stuff up here, but you can also use it to uh, define smaller areas like hands, fingers, and uh, like if I didn't have these it would just be a big pink blob so you wouldn't really be able to tell what it is but with those uh, sh shading added in you can kind of get the feel that it's a fist um, so I think that's everything that I wanted to cover in this um, but just keep looking out in pictures that you see a lot of people use this type of thing I picked it up off of watching videos on YouTube uh, so there's a, there's a lot that you can do with it. I mean, you're only using the pen tool, really, in Pathfinder, but there's a lot that you can do with it, and it gives you a really cool look, I guess. It's, it's a pretty unique style with Illustrator, so have fun with that. Um, good luck to your future art projects, and uh, I guess happy drawing. So see you later.